Welcome to Life Lessons. I'm Isaac Yu. In this series on Jesus, we've looked at the evidence that points to Him as the promised Messiah, evidence that demands that we can't ignore this question of who is Jesus. We also looked at the death of Jesus and saw that Jesus' death was His mission, the very reason He came to this earth, and that His death is the key to God's plan for world redemption. We also saw that Jesus didn't just claim to have come from God, but that Jesus actually claimed to be God, truly the most significant claim ever made by anyone. In this episode, we'll confront head-on probably the most controversial issue surrounding Jesus and Christianity today. Hundreds of millions of people have put their faith in Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and millions more believe that He is a noble leader and a good teacher, but also believe that His claims are not exclusive, that He is one of several paths to God. But if you actually examine what Jesus said and what the Bible teaches, you see that Jesus Himself set a very stringent standard for those that seek to follow Him. Is Jesus the only way to God? Of all the religions, of all the faiths in the world, is He really the only path to God? Let's look at this question and how Jesus Himself answered it. The setting is Jerusalem. It is around the year 32 AD, during the Passover holiday festival. Tens of thousands of visitors have made their annual trip to Jerusalem to offer sacrifices at the temple. And this year, the city was bustling with anticipation because Jesus, this controversial teacher and healer, was also there. He had established a reputation for his healing, miracles, and huge crowds had been following him for three years. There were few people in the country that hadn't either heard the stories or seen for themselves the people he had healed, or at least knew someone who had. No one had ever seen anything like him. Everyone wondered what to make of him, and many were going to finally get the chance to see him for themselves. Now for weeks, Jesus has been privately preparing his followers that he was getting ready to leave them. He had been explicit with them that his departure was imminent, and on the eve of the Passover holiday, Jesus was celebrating this sacred Passover meal with his followers. He knows he's about to be arrested, tried, sentenced to death, beaten, crucified, and resurrected from the dead. He tells his followers that he is leaving them in order to prepare a place for them, a place where they will eventually come to be with him. He is telling them that he is getting ready to go back to heaven with God where he came from. There are many rooms in my father's house, and I'm going to prepare a place for you. I would not tell you this if it were not so. And after I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to myself, so that you will be where I am. You know the way that leads to the place where I am going. Lord, we do not know where you are going. So how can we know the way to get there? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except by me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. By his own words, Jesus said that no one comes to the Father except through him. Jesus said that he is the only way to become reconciled to God. But what about other religions? What about other faiths? This sounds narrow and exclusive, doesn't it? Well, when looking from the vantage point of 21st century pluralistic society, it may. But just as there are fixed and established principles and laws that govern the physical universe, physics, gravity, and chemical reactions, Jesus and the Bible are very clear and unapologetic that there are spiritual truths that also govern the universe. As much as one might wish or hope that mixing hydrogen and oxygen together would make oil or gold or platinum, it doesn't. It makes water. Every time. Always has. Always will. And one of the most basic spiritual truths that the Bible reveals is that only Jesus 
provides the means of redemption for humanity. As we saw in the life lesson on why did Jesus die, only Jesus' atoning death solves the human sin dilemma. The New Testament is crystal clear on this, and regardless of how narrow or exclusive it might sound to modern man, the New Testament never wavers from this point. The Apostle John writes, He who believes in the Son has eternal life, but he who does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides or remains on him. The author of the book of Luke writes, There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved. The Apostle Paul writes, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And the Apostle John writes, If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and He Himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for those of the whole world. Yes, other faiths and religious systems offer words of hope, words of encouragement, good advice, wise thoughts, and noble ideas, but they can't deal with humanity's sin problem. Other faiths are well-meaning, but they are inadequate to address the sin problem that confronts us all. Reconciliation to God is not based upon what we do, upon our religious attempts to follow a religious creed or a set of practices. Reconciliation to God is based upon God's own method of payment for our sin. In Jesus' own words, He is the only way to reconciliation with God. We'll continue our series on Jesus, looking deeper at some of the questions raised by Jesus' claims in the next episode of Life Lessons.